we're going to look at how to knit roshimuna in the round, repeating our pattern all the way around to create a continuous pattern similar to stranded color work or fair isle knitting. Now this is a take on roshimuna knitting that is not exactly super traditional, but a little bit of a modern twist like here in the Agnes cowl. So let's get started. So roshimuna, and in this video, we're going to be working it in the round on this small little swatch. And I'm going to be repeating this 10 stitch pattern repeat all the way to the end of each round. Now, if you've done Rosimina before, this chart won't look so odd, but all of the black stripes are basically intentional floats I'm going to be creating with my contrast color to make my pattern. So essentially the Rosimina pattern. So let's get started. I'm gonna grab my contrast color as the very start of my round. We'll start off with a float. So I'm gonna grab my contrast color here and I'm going to place it in between the needles. Just move my chart out of the way a little bit here. In between the needles, tail to the back. Give yourself a generous amount of tail. You'll thank yourself later when you're weaving in the ends. And then the rest of that contrast color attached to your skein of yarn should be towards you in the front. Now I like to put the tail down the middle of the tube like so so it's just out of the way so what you should have is something like so now i'm going to knit the number of stitches for the first float so i've got three here I'm just gonna let that contrast color hang out in the front and i'm only going to be knitting with my main color so following the same principles of roshimuna knitting you're only knitting with your main color and just working your contrast colors weaving them backwards and forwards so once i finish knitting those three stitches i'm going to take my contrast color to the back between the needles like so so i should have a move that dpn out of the way there a stripe appearing that matches what I have on my chart. I'm then going to pick up my main color to knit. When I pick this up, you wanna make sure the main color is coming over top. So if I put my finger below, that contrast color is beneath the main color. That makes sure that this float that I've created will be locked in place. So now I'm gonna to knit to the next float so three stitches always check your chart again knit whatever style you like to knit with then i'm going to bring my contrast color back to the front between my needles and let it hang out there knit the number of stitches for that float again three stitches and then i'm going to take my contrast color back to the back of my work again between the needles, let it hang out. Again, when you take it to the back, it's always important to make sure that it's going to ultimately be underneath my main color. So when I pick that main color up back to knit, that contrast color should be underneath it when it's in my hand ready to knit that next stitch. So I'm going to knit to the next float. So I have finished the first kind of pattern repeat there, which is 10 stitches. Now um, you can place a stitch marker here. That would be really helpful to kind of keep track of your pattern repeats. And then we're gonna repeat the exact same process again. So bringing our contrast color to the front between the needles, knitting the number of stitches for that float. Three there taking it to the back between the needles. If you're working on DPNs like me, it might be between the needles of each DPN as you work around. So I'm just gonna turn to the next needle. Again, I'm always making sure when I have my contrast color to the back that when I pick up my main color, regardless if you're doing 
you are knitting continental or English throwing style, it should always be the first thing on top. That contrast color should be hanging out below your main color. That ensures that you're locking your floats in place correctly. So I'm just gonna carry on in that manner, bringing my yarn to the front when I'm ready to make the next float, following my chart, so forwards knit the number of stitches for that float and then taking it to the back Again, you can always put your stitch markers in for each pattern repeat keep track of where i am but we're just bringing our contrast color yarn forwards and backwards as our chart tells us and we'll do this to the end of the round so i'll just kind of carry on here. And when you get to the end of the round, you should see all of your floats that make up round one, repeating all the way around your swatch or your project. Now, when we get to the start of round two, this is different than if you were working Rosima in a slightly more traditional way of being placed in one part of your project, kind of like in Tarsia. Our yarn is already kind of ready to go. So we're basically, we're going to carry on in the same manner, bringing our yarn to the front of our work, knitting the number of stitches for a float, taking it to the back and so on. So bringing it forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. So let's do round two together, just so you can see that again. So I'm just gonna check my chart. Uh, so I'm always knitting up to the very first float, so I just had one stitch. Uh, it gets a little bit easier as you go because you can see the floats stacking on top of each other as to where you are in your chart pattern. So I'm going to bring my contrast color to the front, so just carrying on. So we just keep going round and round and round. So bring it to the front, knit the number of stitches for that first float in the chart repeat of round two. Take my contrast color to the back between the needles and pick up my main color again. Always make sure that nothing is on top of that main color when you bring it to knit. Knit to the next float. That's one stitch in between. between bring that contrast color to the front again. Let it hang there. I'm going to knit the stitches for that next float, three stitches, and then take the contrast color to the back between the needles, let it hang out in the back, knit the number of stitches in between. And if you've, here I've passed the repeat for one stitch pattern, so if you had a stitch marker in between your repeats, just slip that stitch marker and carry on. And then we're just gonna continue bringing our contrast color to the front, knitting the number of stitches for that float. Taking our contrast color to the back of our work between the needles when we finish the number of stitches for a float, Knit to the next float. Again, bring contrast color to the front. Let it hang towards you. Knit the number of stitches for it. Take it to the back. Knit the number of stitches to the next float. And you just carry on, repeating the same movement of bringing our yarn forwards and backwards for every round. So when we're repeating all the way around, it's just one movement forwards and backwards, and it's simple as that. Now, always check your attention every couple rounds 
so that you've got nice even tension on your floats. You can always adjust them up until the point you weave in those ends.